Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition's top stories. Prime Minister the Honorable Philip J. Pierre to appoint his cabinet of ministers. Educators from 45 schools receive training in digital education leadership and incorporating local culture and heritage in national development. The Honorable Philip J. Pierre, Prime Minister of St. Lucia, has been in consultations as he prepares to appoint the Cabinet of Ministers. The announcement of the Cabinet of Ministers will take place at a swearing-in ceremony on Thursday, 5th August 2021 at 4 p.m. The ceremony will be hosted at the House of Parliament on Library Street, a departure from the announcement of Mindo Philip Park. This was necessary to mitigate any spike in COVID-19 cases and to redirect finances to assist parents with back-to-school expenses. LED screens will be placed in strategic positions to allow for participation of the public. To date, the Prime Minister has assumed the responsibility for the ministerial portfolios of finance, economic development and the youth economy. Principal school administrators and senior teachers from schools across the island have completed a digital education leadership training workshop. The week-long program was a collaboration between the Sir Arthur Lewis Community Colleges, eLearning Academy and the Taiwan International Cooperation and Development Fund, ICDF. The workshop is a response to the growing need to develop capacity in technology and able instruction among practitioners in St. Lucia's education system. E-learning specialist Royston Emmanuel highlighted the importance of enhancing the skills and abilities of one's most valuable resource, the people. We uniquely positioned as a small country, okay, with not many resources. Our key resource is, of course, our human resource. And this is why I'm so happy that we had such a turnout um, for those sessions because it showed that our principals are, interest, are very interested in developing our human capacity, in, 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 in encouraging, in, in, in ensuring that there is continuity in education. Digital literacy refers to an individual's ability to find, evaluate, and clearly communicate information through typing and other media on various digital platforms. Digital literacy has become even more important with the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic, which resulted in students having to transition to online learning. Dr. Harriet De Silva is the Dean of the Teaching Education Department at the St. Vincent Community College. Governments have tried to meet the challenges by assisting students and teachers with devices and access, but the challenges of principals to ensure that the teachers deliver the courses using technological resources and not just transferring face-to-face -face teaching to the technology is why we were here for the week, for the two days. We hope that this workshop has enlightened you as uh, how to face the challenges and how you need to ensure that your teachers are prepared for the classroom and the input that you need. Dr. Harriet De Silva, along with eight facilitators from the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, assisted with the face-to-face -face workshop. Principal of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, Dr. Keith Nurse, noted the opportunities for improvements presented by the COVID-19 pandemic. We are shifting out of that emergency remote learning scenario into embedding digital education as a core element of the learning experience. This allows us to operate in market spaces and to address the concerns and needs of learners wherever they are in fact, Dr. De Silva used the term, whenever, wherever, <laughs> and so forth. And so no longer are we restricted by the geographic boundaries of an island or two or a region. And it is in that spirit our e-learning academy has pivoted to offer services um, to people and professionals all around the world. Deputy Chief Education Officer in the Department of Education, Dawson Ragunanan, explained that the COVID-19 pandemic has altered education systems the world over. 
our education system was transformed. And let me say, we cannot go back. You see, we cannot go back to those days. Because gone are the days when our clients, the students, were digital immigrants. Now they are digital natives. We know that. As can be seen even when you give a baby a tablet, there is a natural inclination to gravitate towards these devices. Therefore, as leaders within the education system, there is a fundamental need for us to be able to provide digital leadership at all levels, starting with digital literacy. Ambassador of Taiwan to St. Lucia, His Excellency Peter Shen, highlighted the importance of such programs to the education sector. Capacity building of educators in information technology is one of the core values of the ICT for Education Development Project. There were more than 50 hours of training conducted in the year of 2020. These capacity building classes were designed to build up teachers' ability to create teaching contents and master the education tools. But to better integrate teachers' ICT skills into the teaching environment, school principals play a pivotal role. The Digital Education Leadership Program is designed to better equip school leaders to facilitate the use of ICT resources in the field of education. I am proud to say that St. Lucia is the first country to provide the Digital Education Leadership Program in the Caribbean. Ambassador of Taiwan to St. Lucia, His Excellency Peter Shen. The five-day digital education leadership program targeted 45 primary and secondary school teachers throughout the island. The importance of incorporating local culture and heritage in national development practice was highlighted at the launch of the Caribbean Ties Exhibition on Emancipation Day. The showcase which runs all August is expected to be an added attraction for cruise visitors this summer. Jesse Leos has a report on this and other expected outcomes from the exhibition. Caribbean Ties Connected People Then and Now is a traveling exhibition that opened in 12 countries across the Caribbean and in the Netherlands in 2019. The initiative is the culmination of a Leiden University-led research project titled Nexus 1492. St. Lucia was not on the original roster. However, through fortuitous means, the St. Lucia Archaeological and Historical Society was able to partner with the organizers to stage the exhibition on the island this year, 2021. Throughout August, the general public is welcome to visit the exhibit, which showcases indigenous heritage and culture and its contemporary value, along with a very local cultural package, including artisans at work to enliven the exhibition. President of the Society, historical anthropologist Dr. Winston Fulgen says one of the objectives of the exhibition is to highlight the heritage of St. Lucia and the wider region and the importance of its protection within a nation's development agenda. Development, where we think steel, concrete and glass is the only way to bring people forward, threatens to destroy sites in order to foster economic development. This exhibition is taking place on one of the last heritage sites in the city of Castries and the wider Castries Basin and in St. Lucia um, in general. One of the aims of the Nexus 1492 project is the highlighting of the past within the present to ensure that the heritage agenda of our times raises awareness of the, for the preservation and protection of the past. Today, I hope that the collaboration between the Leiden University, the St. Lucia Archaeological Historical Society, the Holy Trinity Church, Church sorry, and all of the other partners who have come together for this exhibition brings St. Lucia and the St. Lucian public to a point where there's a spotlight on heritage and the need for its preservation. Donalyn Vite, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and the Creative Industries, expanded the perspective of heritage and sustainable development by emphasizing the importance of mainstreaming local culture and heritage in the national development practice, specifically with tourism. 
the interconnected relationship between tourism and culture and the shift in visitors' awareness has put to focus tourism concepts such as heritage tourism, cultural tourism, village tourism, community tourism, rural tourism, and many others. In the final analysis, the concepts all recognize the needs and travel motivation of the visitor today have gone far beyond sun, sea, and sand. Some of the factors that strongly influence the visitor's decision and travel patterns are the visitor's essential motivation to learn, to discover, and experience, to really look into the intangible and tangible cultural heritage of our people, its attractions and products that make the destination. The ministry and the organizers have hope that the exhibit can be sustained beyond August. Vite pledges continued support of the initiative, including the development of a tour package of the exhibit to present to cruise agents. Dr. Filgens and Vite were speaking during an Emancipation Day church service to launch the Caribbean Ties exhibition in St. Lucia. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is spearheading the commemoration of World Breastfeeding Week. The observance is a global campaign aimed at raising awareness and promoting the benefits of breastfeeding. It is observed annually during the first week of August. This year it is being held under the theme Protect Breastfeeding, a Shared Responsibility. Lisa Hunt is the Chief Nutritionist in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The theme is aligned with Sustainable Development Goal 2030 campaign, which highlights the associations between breastfeeding and survival, health and well-being of women, children and nations. This year's objectives are to inform people about the importance of protecting breastfeeding, anchor breastfeeding support as a vital public health responsibility, engage with individuals and organizations for greater impact, and galvanize action on protecting breastfeeding to improve public health. A primary focus of this year's observance is the International Code of Marketing of Breast Milk Substitutes. This code was adopted by the World Health Assembly in 1981 to protect families from the infant formula industry's aggressive marketing tactics aimed at promoting breast milk substitutes, which was contributing to declining breastfeeding rates and increasing child morbidity and mortality. The aim of the code is to contribute to the provision of safe and adequate nutrition for infants by the protection and promotion of breastfeeding and by ensuring the proper use of breast milk substitutes when these are necessary on the basis of adequate information and through appropriate marketing and distribution. This year, 2021, is the 40th anniversary of the code. UNICEF and WHO have called on governments, health workers, and the baby food industry to fully implement and abide by the code's requirements. The code requires governments to enact and enforce legislation to prevent commercial interests from undermining breastfeeding, the optimal nutrition for infants. In an effort to prevent this undermining, health workers must protect promote and support breastfeeding and must not accept event sponsorship from companies that market foods for infants and young children. The Department of Justice wishes to inform the following persons that they should present themselves to the Civil Status Registry from Monday, August 9, 2021 to Friday, August 13, 2021 between the hours of 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. Mr. Lawrence de Gaza of Monsieur Schwazel. Mr. John Montout of Mabuya Valley Denry, and Mr. Francis Chalry of Grace Vivort. You are asked to work with a valid form of government-issued identification. For additional information, persons can contact the Secretary to the Registrar of Civil Status at 468-7017. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. Caribbean Ties, a connected people then and now. A unique exhibition that presents the diversity and complexity in the Caribbean before the arrival of the Europeans. 
August 1st to the 31st at the 100-year-old Anglican Annex. Open daily, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Be part of the past, still present today, through stunning exhibits accompanied by live cultural street entertainment. Save the dates, August 1st to the 31st. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Ta, Janelle, Monsieur Madame, Department, Kenny Responsibility for Information, uh, Gouvernement Setlisi, Sa se GIS, Sa se VP, Television National Pia NTN, Capuceto Nouvelle Aquayol, Presidente Primus Hutchinson. Premier Ministre Setlisi, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, j'ai trouvé une invitation pour visiter le pays Taïwan. L'invitation à la fête de la conférence vidéo et le ministre des Affaires et des Étrangers de Taïwan, Dr. Joseph Wu. On a Dr. Ernest Hiller et on a Alva Baptiste qui ont aussi assisté à la conférence vidéo. Le ministre Wu félicite le Premier ministre Pierre et puis Mamli à la victoire en dernière élection qui a fait le 26 en mois de juillet 2021. Le ministre Wu a aussi renforcé la signification diplomatique cette ci quand on a assez plus bon sang mi Taiwan en Caraïbes là, ministre a fait les étoiles jazz Taiwan là fait promettre là que pays Taiwan qui continue pour cimenter bon relation ça là et coopération entre des pays là et aussi pour travail et puis administration nouveau là pour y trouver plus bénéfices projet hot Taiwan pour cette ici. Ministre vous aussi dit que Taiwan a apprécié des grands supports que cette ici a continué Bayo en participation Taiwan continuellement en ces organes qui passent. Il croit à ce premier ministre Pierre pour continuer support que cette ici toujours a Bayo Taiwan en affaire internationale et qui a invité le premier ministre Honorable Philippe J. Pierre pour visiter Taiwan. Le ministre des Affaires étrangères de Taiwan a aussi promettre pour visiter cette ici en tant que venir. Premier ministre Pierre montre appréciation pour le président de Taïwan, Tsai Ing-wen, et le gouvernement de Taïwan pour continuer à supporter le développement national à cette ci et de faire assistance que Taïwan a cette ci pour abattre la maladie de Corona. Il y a encore répété la détermination administration, administration pour renforcer les relations diplomatiques et la coopération entre cette ci et puis Taïwan. Il déclare que des pays qui ont embrassé une relation de bons amis qui bâtit à ce valet de liberté, de démocratie et respect pour les droits des hommes et respect pour loi. Le directeur de la Banque mondiale a approuvé 21,9 millions de dollars américains pour cette ci développer le secteur de l'énergie renouvelable. Assistance financière qui est fait possible pour le gouvernement de cette ci fait assessement des ressources des énergies géophamiques pour produire courant et aider à renforcer l'environnement business pour le secteur privé en PIA. Selon la Banque mondiale, le développement du secteur projet renouvelable qui a aidé cette ci à estimer à qui meilleure façon l'énergie géophamique en PIA a fait contribution pour un secteur santé sans dissolve. Énergie haute ressource géophamique, c'est une qui est plus net et qui a éprouvé à se réhabiliter le système courant et réduit à se dépenser pétrole qui paye la car acheté l'autre pays. Puis pour le service courant en cette ci c'est une qui est très haut et c'est une qui, qui a apporté mauvais gênement pour la compétition et l'organisation en business pays là. Puisque c'est 4-5% en business, j'ai fait plainte de manière pris pour service courant qui a affecté l'opération business yo mauvais tout le C'est pour ça que ça a réduit à ce manière pays cette ci qui a dépend à ce pétrole pour procurer service courant. Pour ça a une besoin capacité pour servir équipement pour percer tout, capacité pour bâtir assistance technique et engagement des affaires la place. Pour ça aussi a préparé les femmes pour faire travail technique côté yo ça trouver information des programmes éducation et l'occasion pour trouver yo employé en ma projet ça là yo officier à département agricole qui responsable pour protection de divers chimiques qui les cultivateurs a servi pour assurer yo j'ai fait un appel pour l'année plus étonnement et certification en service de prison ça là 
Officia twe konsane manye fama ka servi ke mik vaiti vai san ase proteksyon. Idi ki le ki livate ni pou sa pli kapab o servi ke mik aba pitasyo agrikolyo. Ife a deklarasyon sa la di wanyo diskisyon aso program agrikola mouvman. Kletas Alexander deklare ki advansman an afe teknoloji cha ouve zye publik la konsane servis se mouve preso sa la ek mwenye yo sa servi yo a fason yo si pose fe yi. Selon M. Alexander, le yi ka vizite divers bitasyon agrikol, e jawe se fason ki le fa ma ka servi ke mik ki dajewe ki sa ka ek sa ka pote pou yo ek se dajea ki sa ka pote pou yo o si ek le vionman ek sante zanimo. Alexander fe kopon ki La ni an pil fama ki pa kapap pou li se informasyon ki asou se boutey kemik sa la. Ek an lot problem se biznis la kote yo ka achete se kemik la. La menm pa ni informasyon pou ti de se fama ki man ye man ye pou servi se kemik sa la. Ofisye pou proteksyon kemik la ajoute ki an pil an se kemik sa la ka pote se te prezon ki pli danjewe pa se kemik la menm. Ek majorite le fama pa menm sav sa. Yo pa menm sav sa. Ek yo pa ka menm servi ekipman ki nesese le yo ka servi se kemik sa la. E di yo si, la ni fama ki ka kwe ki si yo servi pli homizi pa se sa ofisi extension na di yo pou servi, yo ka isa efasi problem la pli vit. Men sa ka fe pli domaj pou dan we ekstrate yo menm. Bon, si yo pa servi a se kemik, se bet la ki ka trouve de tui, yo pa ka y trouve de tui a se, ek an tan se ti vermi sa la ka y wè sa reziste kemik la, ek sa ka y pote pli problem. Ek se kosa nou atwa ou. Bout nou vè la, mese madam, mou ka mese ou otan. Pou ka gade, mou ka bo yon invitasyon. Pou chen pi mou an konsidye, konse vè la vi, nan gaye pwese to lot nou vè an kwe yon. La prezan, mou ka vye pwese to ou. Chanel. Mes yapil primus. Now let's take a look at the weather. In the forecast, Winds are blowing from the east near 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour, becoming lighter and variable at times, referred to partly cloudy skies with a few showers. The sun will rise Thursday at 5.48 a.m. It will be partly cloudy to cloudy skies with scattered showers and a chance of isolated thunderstorms. And now for the tropical outlook. An upper-level trough together with an approaching tropical wave will cause an increase in cloudiness, shower activity and possibly isolated thunderstorms over the Lesser Antilles. Another tropical wave over the tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 15 miles per hour, 24 kilometers per hour. Some slow development of this wave is expected over the next few days. A third tropical wave located over the eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. Also, a small area of low pressure located over the far eastern tropical Atlantic has a low chance of tropical cyclone formation during the next five days. This system poses no threat to our region. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.